Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this video this is going to be workshop leather number six. So still trying to put one of these out every month at the moment, seem to be going down reasonably well and in this video we're going to follow on from what I did in leather number five last month when I started talking about welding equipment and getting myself equipped up to do a bit of welding I'm just trying to improve my capabilities so I've based on that in the last month I've been ordering some bits and pieces various bits and pieces have come in and we're going to run through some of those and we'll do a bit of a strip down of the SIP MIG welder that I've got and a bit of a tidy up of that I'll put that footage in and then we'll talk a bit about what's coming next in terms of projects that are coming up so I'll move you back in at the bench we'll start going through some of this stuff so we've got some bits that I've purchased from the welding perspective and also some viewer mail that's coming as well so we'll just run through some of that for now and I'll bring you back in at the bench while we do that so first up it's a decent welding mask well decent <laughs> decent compared to what I've been using to date so this is an auto darkening it's leopard brand it's you know it's not the cheapest but it's certainly not the most expensive either I, I forget what this was about 30 ish pound I think something like that 20 28 maybe so something of that magnitude so yeah just a leopard plain black I, you know I, was, I, I looked around and there's all different ones with skulls and all kinds of things all over them but I just wanted something plain and simple so we got that it's got the solar panel and the auto darkening screen on it it's got some control adjustment on the side for the amount of uh, darkening that you need and inside the helmet itself and anybody who's done any welding with one of these may recognize the inside there's a, a set of control buttons inside there for various controls and functionality of the auto darkening screen and there's a test button as well that just checks that out so that's all good I've not used it yet don't know how good it's going to be but certainly the reviews that this one got over some of the others I was looking at was very good so hopefully that's going to be okay so I've given it a test fit and it fits pretty well so we've got it to fit my head so that's all good so we're ready to go I don't know how long we'll keep this this bag to keep it in but certainly for now we, we will I'm sure over time this will end up getting chucked away or ripped or torn or whatever or maybe even gone mouldy with the damp but uh, we'll keep it in there for now just to try and keep it clean so next <laughs> I don't know I touched this in the last blether video but I, I just before I took the packaging away I thought it was worthy of note so I bought this off I think it was either eBay or Amazon I think it was eBay so you know it clearly says Decton steel square which is what I thought I purchased <laughs> hardened and tempered strong steel square that's what it says here's some magnets the only bit of steel I could find were the two rivets that hold it together so whether they're hardened and tempered or not I don't know but that is clearly aluminium the whole thing it doesn't matter you know I got this purely for welding uh, welding purposes so it'll be fine for what I wanted it for but I just thought you know when you're on eBay just be careful what you think you're buying versus what you are what you are actually buying <laughs> I just don't know how they can even put that I mean it's just unbelievable how they can write that and then strap a piece of aluminium to the front of it anyway there you go that's that various other things on top of the box here so I've bought myself a decent set four off casters with bearings and brakes so all four are braked and all four steerable and these are for my welding cart come welding bench so that's going to be one of the next projects that I embark on so these are for the base of that and that's going to sit under the bench in the middle here hopefully so it's going to be made to fit in that space I just bought some really cheap and nasty stainless steel wire brushes 
and they are cheap, but they'll do the job. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm yet to understand whether they are stainless steel. The fact that the magnet sticks to them all tells me that they're not stainless steel. So yeah, another purchase off eBay. Care for what you buy. Some more magnets. So I bought four of these, and you can see they're picking up every bit of swarf off the bench at the moment. So four of the sort of corner 90 degree magnets, which again will be useful for when I'm building the the welding cart. So we'll give those a a try out while we're doing that. So they're going to be useful. So that's kind of all of the welding related stuff on the bench. I've got some more bits and pieces down at floor level so we'll just cut to those now as we talk a little bit more about the welding and then we'll probably break out to the welding kit upgrade that I did. Uh, I think just before I do that I'll run through this box and then I can clear the bench ready for the ready for the welding kit. So this is from Aid of Aid's workshop and we've had quite a bit of backwards and forwards myself and Aid over certainly the time that I've been on YouTube um, feels like a, a best mate so he's dropped me a handwritten note which is nice he finally managed to get to the post office and he's thrown a few items in here um, that he hopes that I'll be able to find useful so thank you very much Aid much appreciated I've not really been into this yet I've popped the top open just ready for this filming but I've not been into the box yet but I have got a reasonable idea what's in here. So Aid's got a Warco lathe and he's got some tools that are too big for his Warco lathe and he basically said he thinks they'll fit my Harrison so he said I might as well have them. So he sent me some tooling up and there's a couple of other bits and pieces in here as well. So we'll just get into the box quickly and see what we've got. So some incredibly robust Clamps, they're going to be very useful. Certainly the the right size for my mill. I need to check the T-nuts at the bottom there. Might, might need to just change those, but yeah, a pair of clamps there. Almost, yeah, they're, they're a pair. One's been drilled out at the back and threaded and the other one hasn't for a backstop. And I guess I could modify that so that they both have got the same thread in the back, but yeah, very handy. Another clamp, oh, that's interesting. I've never seen one that shape before. It's got a heel on it that's been welded on. So this has obviously been made around a specific a specific job I'm guessing, but quite a nice slender slender clamp. And that T-nut looks bigger than my T-slots, so again could potentially machine that down to get that to the size to fit my mill. But always useful things like that clamps never have enough of them so that's handy thank you Abe and then I think this will be the I think this will be the lathe tools let's just have a look in here all very well packed in fact better packed than some of the stuff that you buy off the internet Trying to read the name on that. What Wallenite? W A L E N I T E Wallenite. I think that is. That's a new name on me. I've never heard of those before. Got a D style insert in it, and that will be very useful. I've got some D style inserts in my insert selection, so and that will fit my cartridges no problem at all so that's good brazed brazed insert boring bar yep that will fit my holders as well so that's usable looks like it needs a bit of a grind on the front but that's no problem so that's useful And then, oh, that's a nice, that's a nice chamfer tool. I'm going to check the angle of that. In 
fact. Let me just use my hardened steel square. I think that could be 60 degrees potentially, so you could actually thread with that. I'll double check the angle, it's certainly not 90 degrees anyway, so yeah, braised carbide, again, very useful and will fit my machine. And a pair of swarf removers, and you can never have too many pairs of those. I've got two pairs and I can never find a pair when I need them. So yeah, thank you Aid. All very useful stuff. Aid's sent me something else that we've spoken about. This is something that he's been sent by somebody else that Aid said he's got no use for. So if we can just get this out of the box. I think this is brand new by the looks of it. Or certainly very new. It's not been used much. So this is a, an MDRO, two axis DRO readout unit. And in the box with it comes the instructions. It's got all the documentation that comes with it. And also, I think in here is the, the arm that holds that unit, similar to the one I've got on the mill that holds the, the DRO unit. I'm sure that's what, what must be in here. I did say he was putting that in. Let's see if we can get that out and have a quick look. Yeah, so that's the, the steel arm that holds that unit. And down here is the bracket for the end of the arm for one end of it and the other bracket to fix to the bottom of the readout unit. So that's a head start for me for the RO on the lathe. So I'm really pleased with that. So thank you Aid. Fantastic box of tricks there, they're all coming very handy and the DRO especially, we're going to leave it boxed up for now but at some point in the future I'm going to get some MDRO scales for, for my Harrison lathe and we'll get that mounted up on the lathe. Um, like I say I'm a bit DRO'd out at the minute after having just done the mill so we'll probably leave that for a few weeks and then we'll probably attack the lathe when the weather's got a bit warmer and, and I can be working. I'm going to need the garage door open to get probably to some parts of the lathe so we'll probably do that in a few weeks time when things have just warmed up a little bit. Okay so that's that so again Aid thank you very much much appreciated mate um, all very useful stuff and um, all will be getting used in the workshop. We're going to take a look at my MIG welding unit so this is a SIP MIG Mate 130 turbo dual purpose to give it its full name. Um, it's a gasless MIG and also a gas MIG and you change that by swapping the polarity round on the output cables. This is probably, I'm trying to think when I bought this, uh, I'm going back to the mid 1990s I would think, late 1990s, something like that. So it's a good 20 year old it's done a small amount of work gasless it's done a small amount of work gas and that's it and the rest of the time it's been stood doing absolutely nothing so it's in a poor state i've got to be honest from the last time i used it it's just been in sort of damp garages both here and at other properties it's had no care and attention it's not been powered on so the first thing I'm going to do is a bit of an assessment we'll take it apart have a look at it and what i'm trying to work out is is it worth investing the money in to save it or do we junk it and get something new so in my recent blether video i spoke about um a, a, a tig welder and that's still on the shopping list however having done some more research into that it's very obvious that to learn tig and i'm a complete novice welder in any shape or form so to learn TIG you need a sort of proper welding bench that you can sit at to learn how to use the TIG kit properly I don't have that today and the first project that I'm gonna make on from a welding perspective first proper project is a welding table come trolley that's dual purpose 
and I've, the more I've thought about it, and you look at the joints that are involved in making something like that, none of them are easy, none of them are easy to support your hand for TIG welding, and I just think I'll get disillusioned with TIG fairly quickly trying to take that on as a first TIG project, bearing in mind I've never lifted a TIG torch in my life. So I've done a bit of MIG welding. Of the three welding, sort of key welding types, I think MIG's probably one of the easiest. So we're going to have a look at this, clean it up, work out whether it's worth saving or not, and hopefully get it back up and running. I need to get myself some gas, one or two bits and pieces, and I've ordered quite a bit of steel that's on its way to me now to, to start making the the sort of trolley and bench combination. So I'll bring her in the bench, we'll have a bit of a look at this and start stripping it down and just take a look inside and see what ugliness there may or may not be. So this is the front of the unit. For those that have never seen one of these or come across one before, it's kind of an entry level. It's probably not an entry level MIG machine, but it's not far off. So in terms of power setting, you've got low and high, so you've got two main power settings, and then between that low and high setting, you've then got max, kind of less max, medium and min. So you've, you've got four power settings locally and two main power settings so effectively you've got eight different power settings to choose from uh, for the for the amperage you've got your main on and off switch you've got your wire feed control and that's it there's nothing else to it from a control perspective so pretty simple obviously got your yeah whatever that is one of those that does the welding. I'm sure it's got a proper name. You can tell I'm not a welder, can't you? I'm sure it's got a proper name. But So, yeah, it's got one of those and one of those, which is an earth clamp. And this is a cheap, nasty earth clamp, really. And you can see the state of the rust on it and cobwebs and spiders and whatnot. This just hasn't been touched for long enough. If I turn the machine round and we lift this panel, and you'll see the general state, you know, it's covered in mould, fungus from years of just being stored in damp places. It's starting to bubble with rust here and there. And it's all bubbling with rust on the top. But that's only the casing. So inside the machine, wire spool, wire feed unit, two rollers, spring pressure from this bit of spring steel here and that just feeds straight down so very simplistic really now this wire this wire spool I bought that brand new probably 15 years ago when I took this side cover off the other day when I put this up on the bench the wire itself was horrendous in terms of sort of mold and just general grub and grime and corrosion on it so I've stripped off loads and loads and loads of wire and what's left is pretty good actually underneath so we'll keep that for now, it looks fairly clean. It's 0.8 of a mil standard MIG, MIG wire. Um, I did power it up the other day just quickly which I really shouldn't have done before stripping it. The fan's making a right old racket in the back, it's got a fan that cools it and I pressed the trigger just to see if anything was going to move and there is some movement on the on the wire feed. So there's hope for it but we'll take it a further strip down and we'll give it a good old clean up as we go get rid of all the sawdust and cobwebs and muck that's in it we'll take this wire feed unit apart put a bit of light oil on where it needs it make sure the rollers are clean and just generally give it a clean up and then we'll get into the other side and see what state the electronics are in in that side so I'll do some of that on camera so we'll start We'll take the, the wire spool off for a start. This is spring loaded, so there's a spring obviously to adjust the, the tension of this reel. So that's the state of the wire once I've ripped loads loads off and that looks you know that looks pretty good I'm sure that'll be perfectly acceptable for certainly for my standard of welding anyway so we'll give it a go with that I can't see any detriment to, to using that so that's the that's the wires ball off couple of spacers 
spring and washer, which we'll just store all together. That just needs a bit of a clean. Right, we'll get some tools together and we'll take this we'll take this unit apart here and just see what what general state this is in and just start you know generally cleaning it up. And you can see there's rust on all the plastic parts that's obviously come off either the casing or this bit of spring steel or whatever. So I'll get some tools together and we'll just start stripping that down. Alright, there we go. That's that side done. Other than feeding the wire back through, which I'm not going to do yet because I want to clean up the the rest of it first and then we'll do that when we're ready to test it all out. So pleased with that side. I mean, to be honest, there's nothing to it. It's a 10 minute job, but that certainly looks like it's got some life left in it. I can't see any reason why that wouldn't work well. So we'll cover that back up for now, spin it round and we'll take the casing off the other side and have a look what's uh, what's hiding in there. So just before we spin it round, a couple of minutes with a bit of the magic liquid and a rag and we've got rid of all that mould and muck that was on that side plate so that looks presentable now. It's still got, it's still bubbled up with rust here and there but you know I just thought while I was at it for the sake of a couple of minutes we'd give it a quick clean up so that's good. We'll whip it round and bring bring it back when we're looking in the business end. Alright guys we're on the other side I've just taken out a few of these self tappers not had this off yet so we do this live nice and easy and we'll have a look what we've got inside so we've got the mother of all transformers at the back another transformer there that's as much as I know about those <laughs> I've no idea what what they do I'm, I'm guessing they work in series potentially looking at that really don't know electronics is not my thing but it looks like yeah it looks like the output of this transformer feeds into this one which is probably knocking the voltage down even further and pushing the ampage up even further I'm guessing something like that as I said I'm not a, an electrician don't understand the electronics that well largely all the wiring looks okay a bit dusty when I turned this on the other day this fan was making a a bit of a racket which it's actually not doing when it's spinning freely so we'll have a look at that we'll give it a clean up we'll generally just go all over this with a brush and clean all the crap and rust and everything off give it a real good clean up inside, clean all the wires off so even all the wires there, all the sort of sheathing is just covered in mould by the looks of it but the, the sheathing looks okay so we'll give it all a, a good clean down, get rid of all the muck, cobwebs, whatnot. give it a good check over just from a you know, loose connections, damage, that kind of thing. There shouldn't be any damage. This that cover has never been off since I've owned this. That's the first time it's been off. We'll check the gas hose just to make sure that looks okay. And there's no splits in it or anything. And then, largely, that's going to be as much as I'm doing at this point. I'm not going to touch it much after that. And then we'll put the guard back on, cover back on, and just carry on the clean up on the front face, back face, and then we'll we're ready for ready for some action then with it hopefully I do need to clean up the the thing which it's now going to be called because I've got no idea what it's called I'm guessing it's called a gun or a torch or something along those lines what I do know is this is a shroud and I don't know if you can see this the welders amongst you will probably be 
<laughs> utterly disgusted at the state of that that I let that get into. So what I have done is I've been online and I've ordered a new shroud and some new tips which I'm guessing just screw into into there. I'll need to see how that comes apart, don't really know yet. So we'll, we've we've ordered new bits for that just to see how that goes. I was thinking about replacing the whole the whole thing but before I start investing too much cash I just want to check if this works so we'll just order the bits we know it definitely needs which are those and uh, we'll take it from there so I'll bring you back when we've given this a bit of a clean up like I did in the other side so that concludes the clean up guys we've done we've cleaned it all up completely now and it looks yeah it looks reasonable it, it is a budget bottom end welder at the end of the day but you know that certainly looks a lot tidier than it did. I'm happy that the electronics inside are good. I've been through all the connections and made sure that they're all good and sound and cleaned a couple of the terminals up and brushed out all the rubbish and cobwebs and leaves and stuff that was in there so that's all clean. What I've done is ordered myself a new shroud and a new tip for inside there the liner looks to be okay so and I've checked out the wire feed with it switched on and it seems to be feeding okay so I think we're in pretty good shape there now with this I just need to get myself some gas sorted out which hopefully we'll be doing over the next few days and then this is what I'm going to be using to build my welding table come welding trolley and I've yet to design that but at least we've got something I think now in reasonable shape to help me do that. Right guys I've been playing with the welder and uh, the good news is it works um, so I've been progressively playing around with the settings so I've started at this end I've just got a bit of 50 by 50 box section it's 2 mil wall thickness or 2.5 and, and I've just been playing around gradually working my way up so if I just zoom you in a little bit so you can see the welds at this end are pretty pretty poor and then gradually as I sort of played around with the settings and worked around until I got to this weld which is my final one and I think for me that's the best looking weld that I've ever done on anything that's pretty consistent it's got good penetration and that was at full power on my unit so max max ampage which will be 130 and about three liters a minute gas flow and that seems to be perfectly okay so I'm just going to try and jury rig up a bit of a a welding glass in front of the camera if I can and that's not about showing you guys anything special that you won't have seen a million times before this is about me showing what I'm doing so that hopefully somebody who knows a lot more than welding than I do who, who might be watching in the comments might be able to suggest different things just to help me out because I am a complete newbie at this but I'm pretty pleased with that that looks pretty pretty smooth and consistent so we'll have, we'll have a go with the with the welding lens in front of the camera if I can get it set up and just see what that looks like Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when hopefully we'll be getting into the weeds of building the welding table.